Hi everyone, welcome. I'm DC Gomez and I'm so excited to have you here in East Texas at my home. For anybody who's in the States, happy Memorial Day everybody. Hopefully you're staying safe and healthy. So I'm DC, like I said before, I am an indie author. What most people don't know, I am also a coach. I am a mentor, I am a trainer, but above all things, I am truly a dreamer. So if one of the biggest things I want to do and that I always hope for is I hope to inspire people to dream. That's kind of my biggest goal in life, to help people to follow those passions, to help people to get out of their way and to go forth and actually be able to accomplish those things. But if you're like me, sometimes the biggest obstacles we have is getting out of our own way. So that shift for me happened probably about three years ago. So when I actually wrote my first novel, Death Enter. It was a transition in my life and I truly had to be grateful that I had to actually take a whole bunch of steps of courage. So because of that, this is why we're starting this series with all things interns today. So today I wanna to be able to answer some of the most asked questions about this series. I wanna be able to kind of get you guys inside, behind the scenes of where we went with this series, how it came about, and some of the questions that most people ask that I'm like, ooh, that's a good one. So we're gonna do that today. So if you're joining us, if you're kind of jumping in, make sure you put some comments in the messages. Let me know you're here, say hi. If I don't get to you to, during the show, please don't worry, I will definitely reply to you. So quick disclaimer before we start, I am a one woman show. So which means if you see me moving around, I, I apologize, I'm not going crazy yet, but I am trying to switch between screens as well as to make sure that I am tracking your comments. So as we go along, say hi, make sure you're here, make sure we know that you're here, let me know where you're from, and we're going to go from there. So one of the things that usually I get asked a lot, we're going to have our discussions is before is, you know, where this series comes from. So before we start that discussion, let me say thank you. Thank you to everybody who's read the series. Thank you to everybody who has sent me comments, who has sent me so much positive feedback, who has given me critiques, who's telling me they love these characters. So I write this for you. I hope that at the end of the day, it gives you an escape. It tells you that you're enjoying it and it helps you to relax. So, ooh, good morning, Mr. David and Ms. Karen that have joined us from Tyler. I'm excited to have you guys. So what I'm going to be doing throughout this is I'm gonna be jumping back and forth to be able to say hi. We have Miss Janine. Hello, madam. I thought you were out of town, so welcome. So I'm going to be jumping in saying hi. If you have some questions, by the way, I'm going to try to kind of also answer your questions so we're all on the same page. So let's get started. So the first question before we go, if you actually get to do this, so this is kind of fun. I want to be able to know who are your favorite characters? So we're going to try something different. So throughout the program, give me some love. If Isis happens to be your girl, which I love her too, Go ahead and put some crowns in there. Put some crowns for Isis. If you're a Constantine fanatic, give me some cats. Any cats will do. You pick which one you prefer. If you're a Bartholomew fan, put some babies in the comments. If you happen to be a death fanatic, she's my girl, put some skulls in there. Also, if you happen to be a Jake fan, why not? Go ahead and put some love, for some, put some devils in there. So, ooh, Craig has joined us as well. Hi, just stopping by to say hi. Hi, everybody. So as you guys come in, go ahead and put some comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. So the first question that I get started. So where did this story come from? So let's start with question number one, which is what everybody kind of curious, why? Why this series, where did it come from? So let's back up a few years ago, and I say a few, five to seven years, I wanted to get back into filmmaking. I wanted to get back into storytelling and I decided to write this short story called Pirate Crashers. And the whole premise behind it, it took place in town, was death was gonna go in literally into a party and go in room to room and everywhere the death went and touched, people just kind of died per se. So at the end of the story, yes, yeah, a little dark in my car, I apologize, I should have warned you. So at the end of it, you know, death is going outside, is looking at the list, is checking the numbers and it's going, realizes that after a night of killing pretty much realized it was wrong house so with that in mind it went back and said i need an intern so this is where this story comes in Ooh, i'm seeing some more just coming in thank you just keep those coming so one of the things that it came about is fast forward 
a few years later, I finally hit that place in my life that I decided, okay, I need to do this. I'm going to cross this list of my life and I'm going to write this novel and I'm going to go ahead and literally commit to doing this for what do I write about? So that became that question. What am I going to write about? You know, I sat in the afternoon with my you know, spiritual director at the time. And finally, when we crossed those huddles, that story still played in the back of my head. What if death had an intern? What, or first of all, why would death need an intern? What would this intern do? And even more, what does death do? So this story kind of played. I drag in my dream team, which by the way, I tell everybody, I kind of take prisoners, so if you happen to be part of my circle, you eventually going to pull into a mastermind dream session with me. We're going to be doing some brainstorming and you're going to go, how did I get here? What happened? So I believe in tribes, I believe in villages, and that kind of became that conversation. So for this intern, it is definitely based on what a desk does. So the definition is simple. So if you read the book, she's a little bit, if you haven't, she's a little bit information. Death, what we call, is in the UPS of the soul world. So death is going to deliver your soul to wherever you think you're supposed to go. So if you think you're supposed to go into heaven, death is going to take you there. By the way, I know a lot of people are going, this is not my theology, this is not what my religion says. Please remember, this is urban fantasy. So I have created a little universe, so please... Don't get mad. Give me some freedom to play here. So death is in the process of taking the soul to the next level. Death is definitely whatever you think that's supposed to be. That's what you see. So if you think death is the green reaper, you're going to get the green reaper. If you think it's an adorable baby, whatever you see death as. For our main character, Isis, and I got some crowns for Isis. Isis Black. She sees death as a woman. It's a beautiful woman. It's a beautiful, caring, loving woman whose main job is to protect these souls. So then, why do we need interns? So if death is in the process of taking the souls, why would anybody need an intern to help you with that? So in like any kind of urban fantasy, any kind of action, there always has to be a nemesis. There always has to be a bad guy. And usually souls are powerful, let's be honest. Everybody wants a soul, everybody wants immortality, everybody wants all these little things. And somebody's always trying to take souls, whether you're going from one side or the other. So the intern's job is simple. Their job is to make sure that nothing interferes with the delivery system. So the story became that evolution of, okay, what do they do? So a little bit of Death Intern, which is book one, is Isis is brand new to town and she kind of gets a knock on the door from Death and a job offer. So the premise of it, what would you do if Death knocked at your door with job offer? I've gotten some amazing feedback. Some people's like, how are the French benefits? Because I'll take it. Other people's like, is it involving my soul as well? So you'd be surprised. So if you ask somebody that question, be prepared. The answer is going to blow you away. So that's number one. So next question that I get all the time, my friends, is if this series is horror. I don't do horror very well. <laughs> I can admit this. I'm a little chicken for some things. So one of the biggest things. So that I have is, is more action. This is definitely urban fantasy. So for anybody who's not familiar with what urban fantasy is, is an introduction to magic. So me, this is very mundane magic. Just letting you know. So I introduce you to magic from the perspective of somebody who's never seen it. So if you know nothing about the magical world, don't panic, neither does Isis. So she gets to experience it for the first time. So her third eye is open. She gets to see the world. She gets to see the veil behind the scenes. So when you're thinking of it, it is, you don't know any magic, she doesn't know any magic, we don't believe magic exists, and we're trying to kind of figure it out. So when you're thinking about it, absolutely, not horror, much more comedy, a lot more humor. Thank you, Ms. Janine, definitely a lot more humor. It is meant to entertain you. It is meant to get you to relax. One of my favorite things somebody said is, I'm usually amused and entertained. They were reading it in a plane and they were like, people were looking at them funny because they looked at the cover and they looked at her and they, she was laughing. That's the reaction. It is an escapism. It is definitely a series to kind of sometimes question some of the things you believe in because I'm going to make you question some stuff, but then it's going to make you laugh. So let me go on. And by the way, hi, Miss Laura, who has joined us, by the way, just keep posting your comments so I can kind of keep saying hi. That way it's not 30 minutes of me just chatting. Now that you guys mind, since you seem to hang out with me, so please let me know. So horror, not so much. Urban fantasy, a whole bunch of action. It's 
hard to take this book very serious when you have a five dozen year old talking cat. Let's be serious about this. Come on. So Constantine is definitely in it. So here's the one that usually I'm flatter and completely blown away. Everybody asks, is Isis based after me? No, at all. <laughs> when I first started creating this character, a lot of the background for story for Isis, I do take a lot of information from people that I know. I take some characters, I take some qualities. Some people have told me, please don't use me at all. I, I love you to death, don't mention me. So it happens. Once they realize I'm a writer, I get lots of those disclaimers. Some of my friends have finally said, hey, I wanna be in the book, but I need to be hot and sexy. So hook me up. So some of them have actually been hot and sexy in the book for a personal request. I can do that, remember still, my universe, I can play with some stuff. So Isis is not based off to me. Isis is actually the backstory is based on my middle brother, Miguel. So quick story. I literally didn't tell Miguel that I was writing the story. So I sent him the book. So he gets the book in the mail. He goes, oh my God, she was in the 82nd Airborne like I was. And I went, oops, yeah, about that. Kind of use your backstory. So as I go through this, I tend to now ask permission now more than forgiveness. Book one was a lot of forgiveness. I literally had to ask my priest. I kind of put you in my book. I'm so sorry. I hope you don't mind. But you're really cool. Are you okay with that? So now I'm asking a whole bunch of forgiveness. So, but before, hey, we started. So Isis is basically Mesa Miguel. You know, she's a veteran. She is definitely musician oriented. I don't have the musician in me. Eventually my goal this year is to learn how to play the piano, but I don't have that part. Isis does. So, and she is definitely an explorer. She is free. She is the one thing we do have in common is we're very loyal, loyal to the core. That's one thing true. But with her, she's the kind of person that's just going to take up and move across the country. That is absolutely Miguel. This is not me. I need a plan. I need some guidance. I need some structure. But still, so Isis is a little bit more free flowing. So it's a little different than who I describe myself. Now, after five books, almost actually after five books and three novellas, Isis is her own person. So while she became part of somebody else, now she's just absolutely her. So some disclaimer for that. So next question, guys. This is the one that I really enjoy is why Texarkana? Of all the places to put, why will we pick up series or in fantasy that takes place in Texarkana? So here's the part. I moved like ISIS. That might be the same thing we have in common. So I moved to Texarkana. I actually decided to stay here by choice. Some people were like, really? I love the town. I love the small feel. I grew up in the Dominican Republic. Absolutely went ahead and, ooh, I got a comment that I completely distract. Sorry. So I see, let's see. Thank you. I actually do. It is actually a comment to have people tell me that. So thank you. I'm glad that you, so if you guys become part of my books, please don't get mad. I love you guys. This is why. So, okay. So why back? Let's talk about Texarkana. Why Texarkana? Um, it is a twin city. So for those of you guys who are not in East Texas, so we have a city in Texas, we have a city in Arkansas. And from a lot of the background, like that dynamics is interesting, but also the kind of the line crosses. So if you believe in lane lines, you know, state line actually crosses and actually has an intersection. So you have all these different things happening in Texarkana. It is pretty big size compared to most cities, believe it or not, but it still feels, if you compare it to New York City, actually we're small, but as a whole, it is still has a small feel. You still, I love the fact that I can go to a store and people truly actually know my name. I don't know if that means I go there too much or it means I meet other places, but it's the feel that people say hi. It is kind of like going to Cheers. You know, if you've seen the show Cheers, people know your name. If you haven't been there in a while, they ask you how you've been. You know, doctors know who you are. You have that personal connection. So a lot of the things that I enjoy a lot is the fact that you can, you can mix with people, you can connect, you can wait to people. So the biggest thing is I have people coming to visit me from New York City. And they're like, I wave down the street and they're going, do you know that person? Absolutely, have never seen this person in my life, but we're here. And this is what you do when you move to Texas, this is what you do when you move to the South. It's something that I love, that I miss. So Texas kind of was great. It has a whole bunch of different dynamics. It has a whole bunch of things going. And it's really easy to give you a tour of the town. So I give you an inside look at Texarkana. I like action. I don't know if anybody else does. So I get to blow up a lot of things. So a lot of my friends go in, is there anything in town you haven't blown up? 
I don't know yet. I'm thinking we're running out of places. So just keep an eye on for that. So back to, so question, Miss Denine, you asked, where did these people come from? Yes, they're based on people. So one of the main characters, which I was very surprised, everybody wants to know, is Eric a real person? I was like, of all of them, I was like, yes, Eric is actually a real person. Based on one of my friends, he is definitely has those characters of Eric, you know, kind of calm, quiet, kind of sexy, dark humor, glitz you inside. So Eric is based on a, on a person, a lot of those qualities, but at the same time, like most of the characters after, you know, eight books, Eric has become his own person. So that's usually one of the ones that I have. I usually get asked if you read books uh, three and five, you get to meet Welsh and Welsh is definitely based on another friend. He actually asked to be in the series, so I don't feel so bad. So that was actually a good one. So let's tell Constantine, my friends, Constantine has become officially, I don't know how it happened. I will have to say his own individual morphing session. So here's the one that everybody wants to know who I created Constantine on. So with that in mind, let me put some disclaimers. I'm hoping my mom's not watching and she is. Shh, don't tell her. Let's go this quickly. Who is Constantine based on? So here is here's the background. Constantine is based on my mother as well as my cat. So don't tell my mother. Let's just be honest. Don't tell my mother. So why? My mother's honestly now as an adult has become one of my closest friends, if now officially my inspiration. She is one of the most powerful, inspiring. If she was born in this country, she probably would have been president that personality bigger than life that personality that's going to tell you what they think sometimes you don't want to hear it but he's going to tell you so it is that combination and then you have cats and if you own a cat or if you have a pet or if you've been around cats they're in charge they don't care like i should pay some bills my ultra ego of constantine who happens to live in this house definitely is in charge of the house. So it became that morphing. I don't know when I became a cat person. I can officially admit I'm the undercover cat lady. So I have become very cat focused and people going, really? I only have one. So <laughs> I make it sound like I have millions. No, no, just, just one. So Constantine is everybody's amazing inspiration. He has become his own little character. So here's the catch, everybody. I forgot his anniversary. So I have some disclaimers and apologies to do. So every Constantine fan, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So we had to make up for it. Constantine, as we like to call it, his autobiography came out in March of last year. So, and it has been the small little novella that has changed my world. And it has changed the way I see everything. So with that in mind, we have to celebrate. And I forgot. So I blame, I, I blame coronavirus. Can I take that? Can I claim that please everybody? Yeah, you guys are good with that. So here's what happened. Constantine's novella happens to come out last year and it became March and it's actually available for free everywhere. If you guys are eBooks available. So for this little project, this is what we're going to do because I'm trying to get out the hot seat from Constantine. So we're going to do a couple things for his celebration. So if you have not checked out the book, it is definitely ebooks are free everywhere so this is what we're going to do my friends we're going to be giving away i'm going to be giving i say we like i have other people hanging out with me it, unless you count my cat so i guess i do so let's count the cat so i'm giving away five copies of constantine signed paperback of the book for anybody so if you're a constantine fan if you're under the novella for anybody who actually answers this question so you got to email it to me so once again here's my email address what city, and there's two of them that you can pick, did Constantine, the origins of Constantine, took place in ancient Egypt? So go online, put in your answers, send me an email. We're going to pick from the top. We're going to pick five out of the answers we have. So you will have all the way up till Friday to answer. Because on Saturday next week, I'm going to announce the winner. So we're going to do five. So literally is you have two cities to pick. I'm not going to give you any hints. Send me an email which what cities are, and you definitely can win once again your own signed copy of Constantine. The fun thing about it, Constantine actually became a fan finalist in the American Awards. We did a fiction award category for him and he was actually a finalist. I'm all excited about this. So, ooh, I got a big thumbs up from Miss Lydia. Thank you for joining us, madame. Woohoo! So this is what we're doing. So another fun thing, are you guys ready for this? So I gotta, I gotta kind of tell you this huge secret that we're letting everybody be completely excited with us. So to celebrate the anniversary, we're doing something that I have never done before. I'm actually doing the audiobook for Constantine 
and we're going to give it away for free. So here is what we're going to do. I have enlisted, because I told you I take prisoners and the family comes with me. It's going to be broadcast live. Well, broadcast on my podcast. And yes, I have a podcast. So I'll tell you that eventually. So don't worry about it. So next Friday, it's going to be May 29th. It's going to be, the entire book is going to be on the podcast for free. You can share with anybody. You can give it away. It's going to be there indefinite. So you can kind of look it up. So we're going to do huge celebration of Constantine. So once again, for my Constantine lovers, if you're truly a fan, by the way, he has a newsletter. If you want to sign up for Constantine and get the Chronicles of Constantine monthly, because you can't get enough of this little cad, the second Saturday every month we have. You also get a whole bunch, every once in a while, you get some information from me, updates on books and stuff, but definitely comes from the Chronicles of Constantine, so you can sign up on the website. So Constantine, as you can see, has become literally his own little phenomenon. So he is anything you can possibly imagine is there. Constantine will keep you entertained. He's also the, probably the reason I'm crazy about Constantine because Constantine is going to tell you what he thinks, you know, and sometimes we need those friends in our lives. They're going to bring us back to reality. Like, yeah, this is not working out. So make sure you catch him. So I got a couple more questions before our time is up. So let me get back because I didn't realize that I could actually talk this long. But the fact that you're commenting is even more exciting. So I'm, I'm actually having a blast. So here are my friends. Question that I get is, what order do I need to read the books in? Is there an order? It is a series. So when we started out, the first three books, which is Death Into, Plank Unleash, and Forbidden War, you can kind of pick those up in any specific order. So Miss Kathleen, my sister-in-law, and also amazing illustrator has pointed out, you might not be able to do that with four and five. So with that in mind, let me give you the order for everybody. So if you're interested in, and also if you need to have an order, this is probably the reason. So book one is Death Intern. So, and by the way, this is also my debut novel. So I hope you love it as much as I do. And learning process from book one to five is huge. It's kind of gave you some disclaimer. So Death Intern is one. Then novellas are in between. So with that in mind, you have Death Intern. You have the origins of Constantine will be 1.5 if you wanted to do an order. Plague Unleashed would be book three, if you're counting, so two in there. So then you have from a Eugene with Love. So Eugene, it is the novella in between right after. Eugene is Pestilence intern, so he has his own little side story. Then we're jumping right in there into Forbidden War. So from Forbidden War, the next novella would be Rise of the Reapers. So then if you continue in the series, then you can go ahead and pick up Unstoppable Famine. And then the last one would be judgment day so question that i get what is up with the novellas why do we have novellas actually each novella came about a different project that i was working on i wanted to do something related to the series but without actually having to commit the actual novels to them so the novels became a little my babies like i'm very protective of where those get releases and how much control other people have and those are definitely mine but the novellas have been in different projects so when I decided to do it, you know, the series itself, you take in the novels are from Isis' perspective. So it's first person, you're inside her head. Sometimes she does a lot more whining than I care to. So question everybody says, when is she going to become a badass? And why is she getting beat up? She'd been out of the military for a while. It wasn't like the girl was training. Give her a break. She gets better. But those are the novels. The novels are all inside Isis' head. So you get to fall in love with Isis. The novellas, on the other hand, are third perspective. So it is what the boys do when Isis is not around. So the fun thing about the novellas is you now get a whole backstory inside jokes that Isis doesn't get. You know, so one of the big things is, you know, I have an ad going out and it has a paintball gun. You know, one of the things that Eugene creates to stop werewolves, just to give you a little tip inside the book, is this formula that just knocks them out. Unfortunately, it takes all their hairs off. So you have a whole bunch of just nude werewolves trying to transform back. So when Isis gets introduced to this, she goes, what is this and how we test it? But none of the boys want to tell her. So she's like, okay, I'm missing something. So you get the inside joke while Isis is still going, what do you guys do when I'm not here? So that's what the novellas are. The novellas are kind of fun. So the origins of Constantine is literally Constantine telling you a story. Same thing with Rise of the Reaper. So you get a inside Constantine's head. So people who love Constantine, you're going to fall in love with um, the origins. The origins takes you to ancient Egypt. Rise of the Reapers will actually teach you, take you inside the fall of the Roman Empire. So I love history. 
So having to write little books that I can actually put somewhere else is kind of fun. So I get to mix a whole bunch of urban fantasy with some alternative history and I get to rewrite it. Ooh, exciting. Unfortunately, it does involve me actually doing lots of research to make sure that the facts of the background correct. My veteran reader actually did an amazing job. He's like, huh, you got the names right. I was like, I did some research, believe it or not. So that's kind of what you get with that. So if you're looking at it, the completed series actually has five novels. It has three novellas and it actually has two side stories. So short stories, you get the free one, which is the intern from hell if you join the mailing list. So we kind of give you that one. And then the next one, it is Forbidden Love, which is the story of how Katri Katrina met Jake. So everybody goes, oh, there's a love story. Mm, a little. We tried. Please don't hate me for that. So yes, question that I get, is Isis ever going to go on a date? Maybe. I'm trying. Everybody wants her to have a date. We're working on that. So do I have a favorite character? I don't know. I really like Bartholomew. Bartholomew is literally my arms dealer, 11 year old. When he started out, amazing kid. If I had a child, it would be Bartholomew because he would do everything I don't want him to do and get in trouble. That would be my child. Yes. So, but I don't know. It, it's hard. I, I'm definitely a Constantine fan, but they're all my best friends. Like, these are my children. So, when book five came out, guys, let me just be honest, I cry didn't think I was going to cry. I cried when I wrote it. I cried at the ending of the scene. It has been hard transitioning. These are my kids. I have emptiness syndrome. So all parents sending kids to college this year, I feel your pain, maybe not in the same capacity. It was hard. It was hard letting them go. So by the way, more series are coming. So we're going to be transitioning to this universe. So if you see more, more of my kids coming out, you know that I miss them. So are the places in the book real? 90% of the places are, believe it or not. I had to make up a couple because it didn't fit my bubble. I'm sorry. It just didn't. Like, I couldn't find a place that fitted Reapers. It became, oh my God, where am I going to put this place? So it, it's a little hard. It's kind of tricky where, so some things had to be created. Um, Abuelitas is one of them. It is based on a place that was in Texacana, but no longer is. So some places are, some other places are definitely real. I think our ongoing joke is the poor track building, which is the local museum that I love, has been getting a lot of hate lately for me. So they get featured a lot and destroyed a lot. So just to give you a heads up. So question that I got recently that I love, and I know you guys might wonder why. So I was asked, what was the hardest scene to actually write for me? So a little background, I am definitely a faith base. So I do believe in definitely there is a Lord and whichever faith you actually practice, I, I, it's everybody's personal preference and it's an awesome thing. But the hardest thing for me to write was going to hell. So in book three, we had to take a trip to hell. Just a little spoiler there just to give you that. But it officially became the hardest thing. So in book one, as I was writing this series, I'm writing after work, it's nighttime and it's dark, it's me and the cat and we're sitting on the couch. And by the way, let's be honest about this. We're sitting here and I'm writing about devils and demons and I'm writing about hell, you know, I'm writing about all these things going on and I had to stop myself and I seriously looked at this guy and I was like, uh, Lord, Please do not send these things to my house. Please do not send a demon to my house. Please, please, please. Whatever you do, please keep them outside my doors. Let's have some separation of church and state. I, I don't know if I can handle them. She's writing a book. Whatever you do, Lord, please help me. So when I had to write Go Into Hell, that was hard. Let me just be honest. I don't think I realized my creativity, my faith, and who I was was going to get challenged. So how do you create a place that technically nobody really wants to go to? and truly actually make it that you can feel it. And then you, so the writing to hell, so that's why we introduced the boatman, which is one of my favorite. He's definitely probably one of my favorite characters as well, because he's just crazy. So that became the question, what happened? How do I do this? So the going to hell scene was probably one of the hardest ones I had to write. It was kind of scary and a little bit out there and I had to push myself. So with this series, I had to push myself in all different places and had to kind of look at things a little different. And then I got the chance to create a universe and just have some fun with this. So that's been exciting. So my friends, I am so glad you guys all joined me. So yes, Miss Lydia, you're absolutely right. She does say it's kind of hard to date. Um, Isis is definitely having a hard time dating. 
Uh, the joke in book two, which is where dating comes into play, is definitely Isis's joke that she has become a workaholic and all she does is work all the time, so she needs a real life. So Constantine has to try to set her up on a date. So if you've ever been set up on a date by a five dozen year old talking cat, you know it's not going to turn out well. So with that, it's dating. It is a little, adding a little bit of the real life of living in a small town, but still trying to find some comedy in it. There's always comedy. So throughout the ongoing joke, her dates don't end up well, and everybody just kind of jokes about it. So it becomes the character's inside joke of, oh my God, Isis is going to date. Do we need to call 911? Because this is not going to end up well. So quick reminder, everybody, for all you Constantine fans, once again, if you're interested in definitely checking out getting a copy, make sure you send me an email letting me know if you know the Siri, the cities that one of the two, the cities that takes place in ancient Egypt, you can actually be put in a drawing for one of the five books. I would definitely be mailing them. Me and the post office on first name basis, so that's nothing new, so don't worry about it. So for the podcast, quick reminder, everybody, in case you're wondering, I am having a blast clicking this button. So that's why I keep seeing all these titles coming in. I'm loving it. So I hope you don't mind. I was like, look, I have buttons. Let's do this. So make sure that podcast coming out every Friday. New show is definitely this one going on now. But free Constantine book is definitely there. Going to be out there next Friday. You don't want to miss this. The entire book, I drag my brother into doing the narrating and he's amazing. He has that voice that's going to make you go, ooh, talk to me, Antonio. That's what everybody says. So hopefully you guys are loving it. So, ooh, Tom, join us. Hi, darling. By the way, I love you guys. I am so glad you join us. So for anybody who is interested in definitely joining the mailing list, it is here. You are going to get a free short story that is going to talk to you about the intern from hell and actually features the first time you actually meet Katrina, which is absolutely one of my favorite interns. So it has been such a fun time. I'm so excited you guys joined. I'm so glad to have you. A whole bunch of blessings and kisses. So next week for everybody coming to join us, we are going to be talking a little bit about doing it afraid. So the topic for next week is a little bit kind of getting you guys out of your comfort zone. I'm definitely in the process. I want to inspire. I want to motivate you. I want to get you guys to dream, to live your best life possible. But sometimes that actually takes, hey, let's get us out of the way. Let's make sure that, that we're dreaming, we're doing it well. But above all, that sometimes you have to get out of your own way. So we're going to talk about doing it afraid. Miss Lydia just tell me, don't press the right button. You do know that everything on the screen is red. I have little red buttons everywhere. So I'm like, which one should I touch? They're awesome. So I have to be careful. You're right. Don't press the red buttons. So, oh, hi, Miss Tracy. Long time no talk to you. I'm so excited you joined. So let's make sure we're going to have a great time. So join me next week. Same time. If you're in Central, it's 930, 1030. Absolutely Eastern time. We're going to discuss doing it afraid. So bring your questions, bring your comments. I'm going to give you some real life examples of what it takes and what to do. And then we're going to go from there. See if I can inspire you. See if I can help you to dream your next life, your next amazing potential and be able to help you there. So we're going to be talking some cool tips and kind of some stories of why you want to do it. So with that in mind, thank you so much for chit chatting. A uh, huge Blessings and love from East Texas. I hope everybody stays amazingly safe and I'm going to continue to press buttons because I learned how to make these cool backgrounds. So have a great time guys and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.